So we're on Wanagata Road after descending Conway Track, and we've got these dark storm clouds that have been hanging around all day, but no rain expected on the forecast for several more hours. This is the infamous Billy Goats Bluff Track, 8.8 kilometers from bottom to top, with 1,080 meters of elevation gain. This averages 12% grade, and some parts of it get close to a ferocious 30%. Some parts of it are a little steep, whereas other parts of it are a bit washed out. But we make our way upwards, slowly and carefully. Some parts of it are both steep and washed out, which raises the challenge factor a bit. But even this bit was apparently a bit much, so here you get switchbacks. Now he said there were four more coming, but not to worry as the track's wide enough to just pass them where you find them. We continue on up the hill. And there's the cover shot. The odd drop of rain falls, but we really hope it stays as the odd drop. Ah, there's the other four now. One drop becomes a few more, and at this point I was really hoping that we'd be at the top before this gets too much worse. But then, thunder and lightning and a couple more, and not long after that, we now get actual hail. So naturally, this isn't what we want. One of Victoria's steepest tracks, and it's pouring with rain and hail. If it all does go wrong, the panel damage might end up on top of the vehicle as well. Uh, how far, how far do we have to go? Uh, like another 7k. But we're still able to proceed, for now. So we keep going until we can at least get somewhere to stop and evaluate things further. 7K, up uh, 7K ahead of us. No, it's just this all the way up. And so then, we reached the helicopter pad. Now going further up didn't exactly seem like a great idea, but turning around and heading down seemed like an even worse one. Just us. So we made the decision to press on, as we hadn't had that much trouble so far. Most of the surface was just straight rock, so there was still relatively decent grip even though it was wet, as opposed to there being a lot of mud involved. And as well as that, the rain even seemed to have died down a bit by this point. But then, the rain came back. And then with the pouring rain we tackled this bit. Seemingly stuck on a ledge, the vehicle only wanted to slide to the right. No grip on the front wheels to be able to steer left at all. A bit of back and forward was only getting us further turned around. 
Were we to be stuck here, halfway up the track, potentially for hours until it dried out? Would I have to take my chances with the not very functional winch? Had ending up with a non-KDSS Land Cruiser finally come back to bite us? Well, one more try was made, this time giving it a bit more of a boot. Brake traction control bit harder, and the vehicle jumped up over the step and we were moving again. Now I think at this point it's probably worth pointing out that we don't have lockers. Never needed them before, maybe it would have made that a bit easier, but Toyota definitely did a very good job with the A-Track brake traction control on this vehicle. Now this bit's certainly best tackled carefully. I don't even want to know how far down it is on either side of this ridge. And at that point, as the surface just consists of more dirt, things get a bit more slippery. But we're just going to proceed carefully through this, rather than powering through with tons of wheel spin to just dig a hole. And then we're up, turning onto Pinnacles Road. It's still Billy Goat's block track on all time. That's fine. Yeah. Let's never, ever, ever do something like that ever again. Why not? Look at away with it. Oh, what are we getting in a week? See, we didn't need the wing to come rock it. This though. Hey, this though, yeah. Well, I don't know, we didn't get through in trouble. Okay. Pinnacles Road then turns onto the even wider Maroka Road, which we then follow until we turn into the Horseyard Flat campground. Believing that there was no possible way we just got away with doing that without at least damaging something, I checked around and under the vehicle. Everything still seemed to be attached. Now this campsite has horse yards, but the hut seemed a little less than watertight, and the rain was continuing. We may as well just keep driving. Yeah, so you want to try and get over, all the way over to the river then? Yeah, but that's still two hours in sun. Hmm. Even. Doesn't look like it. Every single time I've seen one of those signs on this trip, I haven't been able to determine what specifically. What's well, actually thing. specifically the hazard? I guess that thing, but the pop. Continuing on down the road, I swear I can hear a clanking sound when we've gone over a few of these bumps. Had we indeed damaged something? We stopped so I can have another look. Well, it appeared that we sorta of had. The winch hook. The gate had been bent, the hook unhooked itself from the recovery point, and it was being dragged under the vehicle, bouncing off the road to bash into the bash plates. Securing it round the bull bar, we carry on.
And continuing on down Tamboretha Road, we pass a whole bunch of campsites along the river north of Lakola, finding one that looks good. This seems alright, I like this. Oh yeah. And then we discover another casualty. With the vehicle at an extreme angle during the heavy rain, it seems the tailgate seal didn't quite hold up. But we can't find much trace of the water leak inside the vehicle, other than our roll of paper towels being completely soaked through. So I'd have thought after we went winter camping at Buangor in the rain, that would be the last time, and then shortly after that we were going up to Queensland and it wouldn't be winter again. Well, yeah, it turns out we're camping in the rain at Byfield. So I thought this time, surely summer, summer. Yeah, it's currently summer. Okay, so rather inconveniently, it does appear we have run out of gas. Alright, so time to go and get another gas bottle. So the Lacola General Store will have one, right? No, they expressed to us with some dismay that the local exclusive distributor for gas cylinders thinks they're too far out to bother with, and added one to a tally mark on a bit of paper behind the counter of people who'd come to get one. I worked out that it had last the canning trip plus a bit, while I was disappointed with how little a bit turned out to be. I'd only done the pick it up and shake it test to determine how much more was left, maybe I should have actually weighed it. But this trip wasn't exactly, well, planned. So it was a couple of hours return trip to Hayfield to pick one up. Scenic. But by the time we got back, there's a good chunk of the day gone. Uh, this one's one of the new LCC ones with the... Uh, so that's an Acme thread and the connector screws on the outside. It's, it's still got the internal thread for the pole fitting, but it has one extra trick. I can turn this on with nothing attached and no gas comes out because no gas will come out until something is actually pushing that bit in. Uh, secondly, there's a little interesting safety feature. The LCC uh, bit screws on the outside is made of plastic. So if there's a fire, it's a low temperature melting thermoplastic, so it just melts and pops off because that's spring loaded and stops the gas. So, supposedly storms 11 a.m. Hmm, yeah. Oh well, there's a river here, time to get in it. It's flowing pretty fast, and neither in the river nor out of it is anywhere near as warm as it should be at this time of year. Yeah. Now proper planning would probably also have resulted in us bringing some friends out here for New Year's Eve. Oh well. So we want to get from here to here, but that road is closed. Funnily enough, you've already actually seen me fix that in a previous video at Antenna Palooza. Well, that's what I get when they go out of order. It now being 2023, we pack up and depart camp to go for some sightseeing. We need to get to Jamison, the obvious contender being the Jamison to Lacola Road. But it's closed, so guess what? There's another detour. Well, 
Well, this seems like a good enough spot for lunch. Nope, that one's just a random campsite. And then here, the Mount Skeen Scenic Viewpoint. Now don't you come up here. It's an okay view. <laughs> How's it going? Further down the road is the R2 Spur scenic viewpoint. Not even high enough to see over the trees. You might have to stand on the top of the car. And a little further down you find Bob's Bath, sometimes also known as Bob's Pipe. Can't really find any info on who Bob is or how this even got here, but there's a pipe fed from some sort of water source going into a concrete trough. That then siphons into the bath, and you can apparently light a fire under the metal bathtub if you want it warm. Further down, the road becomes sealed and we reach Jemison, but the bakery is closed, so we keep on going. Heading north along Mansfield to Woods Point Road, our destination being Mount Buller. A popular ski resort during the winter months with steep admission charges. It's, well, just a mountain during the summer months. But like all mountains, it has a summit. So up to the car park, then a further walk up the hill. The view here is pretty spectacular but seeing Melbourne only being 150 kilometres away really hits home about how close to the end of the trip we're at, literally. Oh well, there's still a bit more to see. An area with a bunch of huts and the Mansfield region to explore. Now where we're supposed to be heading from here is down the Cornhill track off the back of Buller, but that one's closed as well. So next time, we'll visit a bunch of high country huts, including one very famous one. Until then, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and see you then.